Chi here with Golden Thread Tarot. How are you doing today? I'm here to bring you another collective message. I hope that this message is finding you blessed and full of abundance, okay? <laughs> so, I was just speaking to my spirit guys, asking them, so, what do you want to talk about today? And what I heard in my mind was remorse. Somebody feels remorseful. Now, collective, this could be you. We all have our regrets. We all have our, I wish I had done that, should have, would have, could have, kite, right? We all have that energy. Um, it's good not to stay in that energy all the time, but, you know, we all have where we suffer from that energy from time to time, right? Somebody here, either somebody you're connecting to or somebody from your past, you, you know, friends, loved ones, um, we're going to look into who it is. But somebody has remorse, okay? Somebody's feeling really sorry for the way that they acted, for the way they treated you, for something that they said. Now, like I said, um, this could very much so, this could be so many people, okay? This could be, with all of this kind of energy that's been going on here recently and all of this, like, you know, we just we just came out of Scorpio, well, not just came out, but we've had a Scorpio season, we're in the Sagittarius season, Scorpio season, brought up a bunch of stuff. Now, this could be a person that... that you know, 10 or 15 years ago that said something rude to you and made you cry and they're remorseful of it, okay? Like, keep your keep your mind open about who this possibly could be, right? Right? It's not always that abusive narcissistic ex, right? Or your abusive parents or something like that, right? There could be a lot of people. There's something better, yeah. There's something better. I really feel like... I'm going to be honest with you, I am getting a feeling that somebody thought that there was something better or that their the spirit got there, the, there was something better, right? There was a better way to handle it. There was a better way that there was a more um, compromise is what I'm hearing. This person could have compromised a lot more and feel, and they could have possibly spared some people's feelings from getting so hurt, right? Um, yeah, they could be asking for help from others, okay? They could need help they could be regretful of the fact that they burned some bridges okay because maybe now they need help from the people or they they see some hello compromise hello you know that they're i'm just gonna pull that since i saw it right absolutely yeah their intuition is really speaking to them and they're just like man there was a better way that i could have handled that situation now again collective this could be you right I'm not getting any specific, like, energy feel or gender yet off this person, okay? So, uh, spirits wanted to keep it pretty, you know, like, open for who it possibly could be. Abundance, okay? So, somebody here is having abundance, right? And, oh, that's a bunch of cards that popped over. No, okay. Oh, no. Yes, this card. Yeah. Yes. What came out? Not the right time if you believe, okay? So I really, with these both being green right here, I'm really getting a big sense that somebody felt like it wasn't the right time to open up their heart to you or they weren't ready or they weren't able, you know? And this, like I said, this doesn't have to be specifically like lover's love, right? Um, relationship love. This could be somebody who needed to be vulnerable with you or needed to be open with you or needed to, you know, maybe perhaps they were feeling vulnerable or they were having a bad day or they were feeling like their boundaries were getting pushed, um, you know, and they snapped and they said something really rude. Well, you know, you're like this and you're like that okay, well, you know what, like, I'm gonna just walk away from the situation, you do, you do what you want to do, okay, and you just walked away from the situation, and now that person, you know, I've, I really feel like at first, at, at first, this person was like, no, I was right, no, I was right, you know, and now after a while, they've been thinking about it, they've been going down inside, and they're like, you know, that really wasn't the best way to handle that, maybe I said, you know, I said some things that I'm sure hurt that person's feelings, you know, I got defensive, they got defensive, but there was something here where you were really testing, and I don't think like testing, like manipulating or trying, but there was something here that was really asking this person to step out of their comfort zone, all right, and either be accepting of a change in a situation to be open to compromise, to be open to listening to your side of the story or be open to seeing things from your perspective and this person really in that moment, um, they could not do it, right? They could not do it. Um, and they said something and they really regret. They regret that they, they regret what they said, right? Um, now, whether or not, you know, you have, um, hopefully you, you can find some kind of forgiveness for this person. That doesn't mean that you have to accept them back into your life, right? But forgiveness is less for you and, or less for the other person and more for you, right? 
Um, it's just so that you're not hanging on to that, that hatred towards anybody or sending out negative vibes or, you know, towards anybody, right? So, what you know, it's a lot easier said than done. <laughs> the perfect time, yeah. Now, spirit is telling this person it's the perfect time, right? It's the perfect time to come in and to trust, right? To have trust, to have faith. I really want to talk about this abundance, okay? Wait, not yet. They said, I really want to talk about this abundance. I'm going to pull some cards for the abundance, but they want me to pull some more. Some more cards first. Some more of the oracle cards first. Okay? This person had a lack of faith or a lack of trust and something happened. Uh, something happening or you fulfilling or, you know, so there was something here. This person had a lot of fear, a lot of doubt. They were just like, no, I can't do it, right? That you were asking for more than, than their heart chakra was allowing them to, you know, to, to do, Right? what I'm really getting out of that. It was really heart chakra based when this person kind of shut down. You were asking this person to become vulnerable or you were asking this person to commit to a relationship or you were like giving them this, the, well, what's going on here? You know, aren't you my friend or aren't you this? Like, what's going on? What are we? Well, you know what? You always push me and I don't really care. And who would really want to be in a relationship with you anyway? Okay, cool, right? And you walked off, whatever it was, whatever they said, whatever it happened, right? You're like, okay, you do you. I'll walk off from the situation. It doesn't have to be necessarily that, right? But it's something along those lines. And this person said some, said some things I really get. Some some things that really hurt you. And they're really looking back on the things, some things that you said and some things that they said. And they're like, they're really kind of, and they're like, they, they were kind of right <laughs> with what they were saying. They were kind of right. Like, you know, uh, they were just asking me to be there for them or they were just asking me and I, and I understand you know this is this person right because I'm, I'm not trying to invalidate this person's feelings or anything like that but they're just like I could have compromised like I could have saw it from their perspective a little bit more I could have been more understanding I could have given them a chance to explain themselves or I could have you know I didn't have to, at least at the very least, I didn't have to call them out their name or I didn't have to, you know, stoop to low blows. I didn't have to say what I said, you know, even if I do stand beside, stand behind my point in the matter, I did not have to express it in the way that I did. I expressed it in a way of being overly defensive. I expressed it in a way that ended up hurting their feelings. And I didn't, I didn't have to say that. I didn't have to say what I said. I didn't, I might still stand beside, you know, like, no, at the time I wasn't ready, right? However, I didn't have to handle it the way that I did because I ended up really burning a bridge that I really didn't want to burn. You know, I ended up pushing away a person that in truth, I, I didn't want to be pushed away. I didn't want them to go away. I, I wanted them to be here with me, but I just wasn't ready. I lashed out, you know, and it could have not even been something that you did. You know, um, this could have been a situation where, you know, you ask somebody, well, you know, what's going on? Well, why are you always in my business? And, you know, something's and it's like, Oh my gosh, like, or maybe somebody else upset that person and you were trying to step in and just trying to defend them or you were trying to step in and just say, you know, you know, hey, like, just explain to me what's going on. Are you okay? You know, and they blew up on you instead of blowing up on the person they were actually mad at, right? They blew up on you instead and took out all their frustration on you instead. And they were just like, man, I shouldn't have fucking done that. Like, I shouldn't have done that. It was rude. It, like, I just shouldn't have done it, Right? For some of you, if you are thinking about this person as, as somebody that's being in a relationship with you, this is somebody that ran away. This is somebody that ran away from their feelings that just told you, you know, instead of saying, I'm not ready or I'm not ready, they pushed it back on you. Like I said before, right? Instead of just saying, look, I'm not ready for this right now. I'm not, you know, like you're wanting this to be something that I'm not ready for or something like that. It was, you know, it was kind of a sense of, well, why would I even want to be with you? When in, underneath it, they did want to be with you. They did care about you. Um, maybe perhaps, like I said, it's just like not the right time. They just weren't ready or it wasn't right the right time right now. It, see, it seemed like there were outside circumstances that were really compiling and pushing and pushing down on that person. And you opened up an outlet to be like, well, express yourself. And they expressed themselves in a very kind of hateful way towards you. And you were like, oh, look, like... Oh. I'm not the one to do that to. Like, oh my gosh, like, what's your problem? You know, and then that person, and then you, 
or, or that person, you know, whoever you are in this situation just walked away, you know, and at first this person felt very triggered, very abandoned, very like, oh, well, of course you walked away and love. but I think in the meantime, they've just been like, right, their things have been balancing out and they're just like, I shouldn't have did that shit, man. I shouldn't have did it. Yeah, ask for help from others. This person, because I, I I did see that ask ask your angels, okay? I saw that ask your angels, but that person was down kneeling, so this person could have been praying. This person could have been asking for spiritual guidance or for enlightenment, okay? And this helpful people here would ask for help from others. This person also could have been, in the meantime, um, you know, um, they could have gone on about their business, doing things with other things, and then maybe perhaps somebody else told them the same exact thing that you told them that was just like, man, you know, you got all these walls around you and you got all this stuff, you know, and you want people to get close to you, but you keep them at an arm's length away. Like, what's your problem? Like, you know, like, how can I get close to you if, you, if you're push, constantly pushing me away, right? And then somehow it's my fault that you're constantly pushing me away. Like, what else am I supposed to do? You know, or they've been put in a similar situation or they got put in the same. It, it's kind of like a karmic lesson that this person has learned. OK, and it doesn't have to be in the extreme, but it is a karmic lesson where this person emotionally put you in a position that made you say, I can't deal with this. And you walked away. That person has been put in that same emotional position. And um, they're just like, damn, I know what it feels like here. The scales of balance have come in. And now this person is seeing some kind of compromise, but this abundance card is throwing me off. It's throwing me off. It's giving me like a side eye. <laughs> it's giving me like a side eye moment here. I just feel like you are dealing with an abundance. Like you right now are dealing with an abundance, okay? Um, which is giving me the side eye. Like, why does this person want to come back in now that, you know, it's giving me kind of like, side eye vibes so that's for some people ask your ask your angels i told you that ask your angels so there's definitely a big ask for help from your angels this person is praying for another chance or praying like to get um you know please you know let me make it right or please let me have another chance in this person's life like i shouldn't have acted the way that i did i see who they are to me now like i really you know give me another chance to fulfill this okay be assertive um, yeah, but this person also, also with this be assertive, I always see that person taking their mask off, like take your mask off, let your ego fall, right? That, I feel like that's the, the advice their angels or their spirit guides are giving them, right? Let your mask fall, take your ego off, be apologetic, Com find compromise in this, right? See the lessons that you were being shown in this. And I feel like this person is slowly seeing the lessons in the near future or in the near future, there's, there really being shown things that is really making them yeah i really feel like somebody here had a really serious like control issue okay a control issue with starting a new beginning or letting things go is what i'm really feeling this person had a really bad heart a hard time of letting things go now this doesn't have to be things that you did to this person right they could have control issues because of things that have happened in the past other people that have hurt them you know you might have said something that that triggered them that in the past you could have said it from a very well-meaning, you know, perspective, but in the past, they could have been in a relationship or could have had somebody like a parent or something like that say something, say something like that towards them and mean it in a passive aggressive kind of tearing you down kind of way. So that person heard you say that and they were triggered. They automatically went to that place of hurt. Like you're saying that to hurt me when you were like, I don't, you know, and, and you're like, I can't, I can't know that. I didn't know. I didn't know that that whoever is so-and-so, like, you know, in a, that you were in a relationship five years ago or that growing up your parents said that to you and they meant it to hurt in a hurtful way. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean it like that. And this person is kind of, I really feel like, yeah, it was a, it was a really big grudge holder. Yeah. So definitely it could have been their mom, okay, with that Empress vibe is the mom vibe, okay? Um, it could have been uh, a teacher, okay? A teacher for some of you. That's just the empress can also be just a feminine energy with a with a position of authority, especially with this uh, queen of wands. A queen of wands can be somebody that's a teacher, a guide, or that's how they're looking at you now, right? They're looking at you now like a teacher, like a guide. They're looking back at you for inspiration as a way to kind of heal this, right? Um, 
also possible. They're seeing you, like I said before, right, that you actually were saying it with well-meaning intentions. Like you had well-meaning intentions when you said it or when you did it, and they kind of, it's like kind of took it the wrong way. Uh, tell me about this compromise. What is this compromise? Yeah, I said that right. Uh, five five of pentacles for me especially when we're talking about inter like interpersonal or personal relationships with people okay for me it's really come out as a sign of abandonment issues right i'm gonna leave you for you leave me i'm gonna put that wall up so that you can't hurt me you know oh you triggered me compromise is l letting go of understanding that you keeping this barrier up between you and somebody else actually makes it harder you know um we'll talk about this I can be completely understanding, right? And most people can. You got hurt in the past. So you built up, so your walls and your barriers are really thick around you. And it is completely normal to start a relationship with somebody, start a friendship, any whatever kind of relationship it is, right? Friendship, relationship, partnership, whatever. With those boundaries up, you have strong boundaries with your walls up. That's just smart. That's decisiveness, right? But at some point, right? Somebody is going to be there. They're going to be consistent. They're going to be reliable. They're going to prove to you that, okay, it's you can let those barriers come down. This person is there. But this is this this person is the type of person that, that no matter how hard you try or no matter what you do, no matter how long they know you or how consistent you are, those barriers stay up, right? And they have this issue where they keep people at an arm's length, right? Because they don't want to be abandoned. But yet... By keeping people at an arm's length, right, they almost ensure and become a self-fulfilling prophecy of the fact that eventually other people will distance themselves from you, well, you will not have that close relationships with people, and in the end, you will end up feeling abandoned. And this person gets in a sense of, I knew it. See, I knew it. I knew it. I kept my boundaries up. I knew they would end up hurting me, or I knew they'd end up cheating on me, or I knew they'd end up leaving me. And, but it's like, where is the time? 17, 17 was down on the clock when I said that. 17, like, where is the responsibility of you understanding that it, it is nobody's obligation to sit there banging and banging and begging and taking a chisel and a hammer and chiseling away and chiseling and proving and proving and proving and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting, and fighting to bust down through your walls to prove to you, Right? It is nobody's responsibility to do that. All they can do is be their truest, honest, you know, self to you and show you, right, with their actions, not just their words, but with their actions and how they move, that they're trustworthy or that, you know, they're not going to be somebody who's going to intentionally hurt you. And at some point, you have to take the risk of letting down your walls. And yes, sometimes you might get hurt when your walls let down. But then on the opposite side, if you don't ever let down your walls, you're never having that true union, that true companionship, that true closeness, that in the end is what you're striving for the most because you were probably very much so denied it, right? In your early stages of life or in a past relationship. So you're at a stage where you're making everyone fight and fight and fight and fight and chase and chase and chase and chase. And, chase. and nobody has to do that. Nobody has to do that. Nobody has to be there banging at your walls and banging. I promise, I promise, I love you, I love you, I love you. And endlessly proving to you that they'll be there for you. Nobody has to do that. Because what about their feelings on the other side of it? What about the fact that they let their walls down and you're still just like, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. What about the, their lack of emotional satisfaction? In, there is no two-way street with that. It's just them telling you continuously, I love you. I love you. I want to be with you. I love you. Or, you know, we're friends and being there for you and hanging out and calling you and come on, come out and hang out with us. And hey, and this and this and this and this. But you're always keeping... Uh, uh, well, they get tired of having that hand on their forehead. They get tired of that face palm. Uh, uh, stay back. Don't get too close. Don't get too close. But you constantly want that, right, as this person. You want that attention. You want that affection. You want that closeness. That's what you actually really want, right? 
these would be the type of person that say things like, oh, everyone always abandons me or everyone always gives up on me. Everyone always gives up on me. But they don't want to take the responsibility of the fact that people give up on them because they get tired of constantly having to prove to these people, right? It's no one's responsibility to do that. It's your own responsibility to take your healing into your own hands, to build up your own self-worth, your own self-confidence, to address your abandonment issues. You know, do what you need to do. Go to therapy, you know, uh, journal about it. Do all the steps that you need to do. It's your responsibility to promote your own healing. It is not our partners or our friends or our work associates, it is not their responsibility to fill in the gaps that somebody left. It's not. Many times we have these abandonment issues and we have these walls up because those people, a lot of times they're our parents or very early on relationships that we put a lot of weight into, right? They create gaps. They create those lacks. It is our parents' responsibility, you know, to help us, to to bring us together, to help raise us, to help build up our self-confidence and give us that that good foundation so that we can go off and go off on our own. And yeah, we might fall, but it's no it's not your part your future partners, it's not your friends, it's not their job to sit there and glue you back together and hold you together and delicately walk around with you because you might just fall apart at any point because you didn't get the stable love and affection that you did deserve as a child or early on in your dating relationships. But it is not their responsibility to do that. It is your responsibility to do that. It is your responsibility. Yes. Did you deserve to be treated the way that you did? No. Yes. You should have gotten the ju- you know, you should have gotten the justice that you owed in that relationship. Yes, your parents should have been there for you. Yes, that person should have been there for you. You know, and they had no right to hurt you the way that they did. They didn't. But it is not everyone else's responsibility that you date or that you're in a relationship or a friendship with to fill in those gaps that you weren't given. It should have been your parents. It was their responsibility to do it. It's not all your friends and your teachers and everybody else's responsibility to do that. It is your responsibility to heal. It is your responsibility to get to the point. Because at that point, you become the abuser. At that point, you become the person who's so emotionally unavailable that you're hurting other people. And I know that it can be hard to see it from that perspective when you're so worried about keeping yourself safe, right? But at that point, you become the person that I'm on that that person that hurt you so bad in your past you have become that person to other people continuously chasing after you chasing after you chasing after you chasing after you trying to fulfill trying to trying to make you feel like they're good enough when you're constantly telling them through actual verbal communication through nonverbal communication from the way that you move that that there's that that you know that you're casting out all your own insecurities onto other people and it is a it is a self you know help self love self respect that those people end up walking away from you because they're like you know what i don't deserve to be treated like this and then there you are behind your wall self-gratifying or self-justifying. I mean, like, see, I knew it. I knew it. There's my justification. I knew that I would get hurt. Well, you're hurting your damn self by keeping these walls up. Can I guarantee that if you let those walls down that you won't get hurt? No, we've all been hurt. We've all been rejected. We've all been walked away on, right? But it is not everyone else's responsibility to fight and fight and prove and prove and prove and I'll fight for you and I'll fight for you and I'll fight for you. Nobody else has to do that. Nobody else is is obligated to do that. They're not. Because that develops codependency. That develops unhealthy relationships. That, That develops somebody just running after you. And probably most of the time, subconsciously, you end up having less respect for that person, even though you want them to tear down your walls, 
you end up subconsciously having less respect for that person because you know I'm continuously rejecting you and you're still running after me. I actually don't want you. Subconsciously, you push that person even further away because they're complying to your toxic ways. But you want to put all of that on that other person. When yes, that other person, uh, however long they chase after you until they develop it, it, it is some of their responsibility to go, no, I'm going to have more self-love and re self-respect for myself than to continuously chase after a person that, you know, I can understand to, to a point, you know, you can be understanding, especially if you've been, if you're in a relationship with somebody who has been, you know, who has endured past uh, physical abuse or verbal abuse, there is a... a, a there is more, you have, there is an understanding of, I have to be a little more understanding about this person because they have dealt with things. But at some point, as that person, it is your job to be healing and come to a point of understanding, oh, I'm pushing somebody away because of my own triggers, because of my own things that I've experienced in my past. It's not on this other person to deal with that, right? There has to be some understanding, right? Say you're, say that you're uh, a person that is trying to be in a relationship with somebody who's been um, physically abused. Well, there are going to be some triggers that you're going to have to be aware of. Don't take it personally if you move suddenly and that person jerks or does things like that, right? You're going. There are going to be some processes in in that and understanding that. And there's nothing wrong with being understanding to a point, right? But there has to be a point in it where you're like, look, you're not letting me in and you're not healing yourself. I deserve to be with somebody who's trying to heal. Now, I can be completely understanding, you know, that you've been through some shit. But at some point, how long do I, as the person who is genuinely trying to be there and show you genuine care and affection, how long do I have to pay the price of somebody else's mistakes? Should I have to take compromises of continuously you not showing me the amount of affection and attention that I need in a relationship because of your own personal issues? From that point of view, it's completely justified that that person ends up walking away from you, right? So there is this compromise now that this person realizes I should have dealt with my issues, right? I should have dealt with what was going on suddenly. This seems like so loud. Um, sorry if that's been too loud in the background, but I was kind of just, I was so into what I was saying. I was just like, oh, this got really loud suddenly. Um, but that's funny too, because this is, it's a, it's a meditation to, uh, to um, cleanse negative energy out of your space, right? Out of your space and out of yourself. So I really feel like suddenly this person, this person's anxieties, this person's own toxicity, this person's own triggers became very loud and obvious to them, right? I really feel like they got put in a situation where they were the person continuously banging on the outside of somebody else's wall. Okay, I'm finally going to let this down. Now I'm now I'm the one on the outside. Let me in, please. Just let me in. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. With that person constantly having their hand on their forehead, and they were just like, "This hurts. This hurts so bad to want to be close to somebody, to want to be there with them." And then they had that, like, ah. This is what it felt like. This is what it felt like to be on the other side of this. This is what it felt like to be that person chasing and 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 chasing for that person to never turn around and never acknowledge you. Shit. This sucks. I don't I don't want to be this. Right? Now I understand. It's it's I understand why that why people walk away from me, why they invest so, so much, but they end up walking away anyway. Instead of finding more triggers in the fact, well, you built all of this up, right? There's that wall, right? That wall they built up and then eventually they're like, okay, I, I gotta go. I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm trying and I'm not trying to give you a false sense of security. I'm not trying to give you a false sense. You know, just because somebody ends up leaving because you won't let your walls down doesn't mean that all the I love you's and all the everything else was meaningless. That person meant that. Now, I'm going to be honest, not all of them, right? Some of them are bullshit, right? But sometimes, some of those people, they meant it. 
right? But the sense of self-preservation, but the sense of, but what I want matters too. And it can't always be, right? This is a form of selfishness. Self-preservation over somebody else's feelings and somebody else's wants and needs in a relationship, no matter what the relationship is, friendship, partnership, you know, uh, relationship with a child or with a parent or with a family member, whatever it is, you know? Tell me about this abundance. I'm hearing it got taken away. Ooh. Maybe somebody sees you as abundance and now they, they feel your absence, right? Look at that. As I said that, right? Six of Cups in reverse. Um, nostalgia, that same old feeling of friendship, of that comfort place, right? This person realized once they, you know, well, fuck you, and they walked away, they realized, wow, that person was my comfort place. Wow, I really actually liked that. Wow, I really don't want this to come to an end. Wow, like, that's not really what I wanted. I should have let down my defenses. I should have been a little more open with this person about how I was really feeling or what I was really going through. You know, I could have had, you know, some conversations with this person afterwards and explained why I felt that way and why I handled it the way that I shouldn't and apologize and say this, right? This person didn't see you for the abundance of love and honesty that you were bringing into their life, right? It is that, you know, you don't know what you got till it's gone kind of feeling this person is having now. They're just like, now that the possibility of being with you or being friends with you or having you around in my life is not there, I feel the absence of you in my life. I feel the absence of your presence in my life. You know, this has a very big feeling of you were their, like I said before, you were their comfort place. You were their, their person that they ran to when they really needed that comfort, when they really needed that, you know, that adjustment, when they really needed that you know, come to reality moment, like, hey, I'm dealing with this or I'm dealing with that, you know, you were that person, that sound person of advice, or you were that person at the end of the day that they came home to that even though you might have had some annoying traits or you might have had some things that kind of just, uh, you know, they miss it, right? They miss you sitting there trying and trying and trying, sitting there pounding at their walls. They're realizing, damn, I, I really... I really liked that person being around. I really liked that person being there for me. And now that that's gone, they feel this lack of abundance energy um, that you brought into their life, you know, and that's not just financially, right? That's the abundance of love, the abundance of care and of nurture that you were giving this person, that you were trying to show this person or that you were, when you were in a relationship with this person, they feel that, you know, that hit them deep. And they were like, I should have been less defensive about this, right? Or they're like, I didn't defend this enough. I just let you walk away. You know, I just let you walk away and was like, whatever, you know? I didn't realize how much me just being like, okay, whatever, you know, would hurt you, would push you away further, would really hurt me, stab myself in my own heart. Not only stab you in the heart, but stab themselves in the heart, right? More on this abundance, please. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's going to come out in just a second. Spirit wanted to go ahead and talk. Oh, okay. Right? Longevity. This person, this was a person that thought that you would be around, right? Maybe this is the type of person that took advantage of the fact that, oh, they'll just always be there. They're, oh, they're, they're always be my friend. They'll always be there, you know, or they're, you know, we might fight, we might, but we always come back together, right? I mean, also at, at this position right here, right? This person is definitely seeing the fact that um, this also can be family, right? This can also be a card of family for me. For a small number of you, I can't ignore that it is there, that this person literally is seeing you as abundance, as money. This person is seeing that they do have a lack of money, um, with you gone in their life, this could be something simple as, you know, wow, when this person was in my life, I was a lot more financially responsible. You know, I was a lot more 
not necessarily financially taken care of, but it's like the difference of having somebody there that helps you, that's there with you. And now you're like, oh, I'm struggling by myself or I'm not as financially responsible or I'm not as, you know, I don't invest as much. I don't take care of myself as much. I'm not thinking about my longevity as much as I was when I was with this person. It's like this person didn't realize that all of that came into their thought process based on being with you or being around you, right? And there was this sense of, I thought this would last for, like, I thought we were going to be together. I thought that this, I thought that this was, you know, my happily ever after. I thought that this was, you know, the end goal here. But that was taken away from me. I just heard this person say, but I took it away from myself. Damn. For like two or three of you, I'm also hearing that this could have something to do with like some kind of legal, uh, so like some kind of like legal separation or legal battle as well, okay? For some of you, this could be a person that you're like legally separating from, that you're splitting a business with or something like that, okay? And um, they're realizing like, oh shit, <laughs> this person was the person that was keeping this shit afloat. You know, they were like, I don't even fucking need you. Then you left and they were like, shit. I very much so needed them. I very much so needed their balance. The, the, the energy that they brought into this really balanced it. They really bought in a lot of abundant energy into this. It really only worked with us being together in a partnership, like shit. So for some of you, it is like a dissolving of some kind of business or a partnership as well. And this person is just like, shit. <laughs> They're also missing your friendship. Whoever this person is, whatever the relationship was, they are missing your friendship very deeply. Um, they're feeling like they're having to really grow up a lot. Excuse me. Three of Pentacles in reverse. Yes, they are really re realizing that this is not working without this contract or without the two of you working together, right? It's not working as well. They don't function as well without you in their life. Now, there is some slight codependency there. I'm not even going to lie. There is definitely some some codependency there. Tell me about this not the right time if you believe. What, what was it that this person refused to open up their heart to? A relationship or partnership for some of you the ones that's talking about the business thing you might have asked them for a raise or you might have asked them to become a partner you might have asked them for um for them to take more responsibility or for or for them to give you more responsibility and that circumstance i'm seeing kind of like a like a parent like a like a parent and a fa like a father and her son kind of dynamic there where you're like i'm ready to take on more responsibility i want you to sign over you know, I'm here doing the work, contributing to the family business. I want to have a stake in the business. Like, I want you to make me a partner. I, I'm here working harder. I'm here working. I'm doing all the job that you would be. I'm just missing the title. And this person is like, nah. And you're like, you know what? Then I'm going to take my business. I'm going to take my talents elsewhere where they are appreciated. This person feels your absence, okay? This person might have been like, whatever, we can make it fine without you. And then, and then you left and they were like, scrambling all right they're like ah, definitely you know they did not realize <laughs> like how important and how vital i think they did but they just told themselves that's fine i can make it without them whatever the fuck ever they'll come back and you didn't you went off and you're doing your own thing and, and now they're they're feeling that hurt they're feeling that pain and you're not being here yeah, they're seeing they're seeing you as very irreplaceable is what I'm getting. Like all these other options that they thought they're like, oh, I have this person and that person and this person and somebody else can step up into their place. And now they're just realizing, nah, nah, you don't have as many options as you thought you did. Oh, not the right time if you believe the world. Yeah. Exactly. You were asking this person to step into a new cycle. You could have been asking them to go through a transformation. You could have been saying, okay, let's make this official. You could have been saying like, hey, like, let's do this. For some of you, if it was a relationship, you could have been talking about having kids, okay, um, or doing something else. And this person was just like, nah. And so you're like, 
oh, so where is this going? Like, uh, for some of you, you could have had a pregnancy scare and this person could have really, like, dipped out of the situation. Um, and you were just like, so you're really not as committed to this relationship as you said that you were, right? You were cool and everything when it was all, you know, hypothetical. But then when it became very real, suddenly it was, oh, I, actually, I don't think I want this. And it's like, well, damn. I mean, that's just, you know, sometimes it takes you getting in that in that situation to know exactly how you'll handle it but still it doesn't hurt any less to be the other person for to be the per to be a person that you that said yeah I want this or I want to get married to you or I want to be with you or yeah we, we've talked about having kids to jump into the reality of oh shit we could be pregnant right now and this person is like uh uh uh, uh you know what I, I I zip and they just and you're like wow wow right? You really handled that really terribly. Like, let, let that end. Like, nah, like, you know what? You know, for some of you, it was just like, you wanted a new beginning. You wanted something new. You wanted to move on to the next cycle. You wanted to take it, right? It, it's the sense of let's take it up to the next level, right? Regardless, right? If it's this partnership thing, I, you know, let's reach it up. Let's make this a little more official. A relationship, let's make this a little more official. A friendship or something else, like, hey, I, I'm going up here. I'm not sure if you're following or if you're on the same level. Are we going the same way kind of energy? Um, not that your friends are obligated to, to walk down the same path as you, but it's kind of like, it's like, I'm going this way. You seem to be going that way. Uh, you know, like, uh, kind of situation, right? But whatever it is, it is you were offering this person a brand new beginning, a brand new level, a brand new, like, hey, let's step it up and take it to the next level. And this person just felt like it's not the right time. They had a big problem with believing, right? Believing in you, believing that you actually legitimately wanted to be there, that you wanted that, you know, and there was something this person was just really holding on to. There was something that they just couldn't let go of, right? They just weren't standing in their truth as much as they could have been, right? Uh, for some of them, they were playing some mind games. I saw that King uh, King of Swords in reverse, yes. And then the King of Cups in reverse came out as well. So for some of them, they were playing these kind of emotional mind games, right? That kind of, oh, I still want you chase, 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 chase. So you're just there. <laughs> and then you eventually were like, okay, right? And then they're like, well, damn, I... I kind of, I kind of liked you though. And you're like, but look how you were acting though, right? So like I said, for some of you, when you expected this person to be very open at the end of the day, right? King of cups in reverse, somebody who's emotionally shut, shutting down, right? They're being emo like for some of you guys, um, it was emotional abuse, right? Not, you know, to the fact of our emotional manipulation, okay? This point person, um... Uh, I'm going to be honest, okay? I try to always be honest, but I'm just going to be very blunt is maybe how I should put it. Um, for, for some of you, this person was just straight up lying and saying they wanted more than they really did. For some of you, this person was keeping you kind of emotionally dang dangling on a string um, to keep you available, right? This person might necessarily wanted to be with you you were just available, right? You were there, you were a good time. They had, you know, they liked the way it felt in the sheets or, you know, you took care of them. Maybe you fed them and you did stuff. You were doing girlfriend stuff, even though you weren't a girlfriend, you know, you were doing wifey stuff, even though you weren't a wifey or vice versa. You were doing husband shit, you were doing boyfriend shit and they were kind of stringing you along, right? I'm so sorry, I've been there too. So I know exactly what it feels like, right? Or, you know, um, this person wanted some kind of quick, instant gratification from you that you saying, okay, let's take this up to the next level, wouldn't give them, right? In the end, you wanted something that this person just wasn't ready for, right? 4404. So this person's re rejection was divine protection, right? And I, and I know it can hurt to be like, damn, this person didn't have to act like that. They didn't have to show out like that. You know, if they just were ready to walk away, they could have just ended the situation. They didn't have to cast it on me and be like, well, you're a terrible person and, you know, and, and all this stuff. And who would actually even, I don't want to be in a relationship with you because you're a terrible person. Who would want to be with you? Like, 
damn, you didn't have to say all that. You could have just said, no, I don't, you know, no, I don't, I don't really want to be in a relationship with you. That's not really what I want, you know, or they could have been kind of stepping around it or kind of being like, I don't know, you know, I don't know. And you're like, well, what is it? Right. But at the end of the day, spirit was teaching you to take emotional responsibility for, for yourself, to take emotional responsibility for, you know what? This person just doesn't want what I want. It's clear. It's very clear by your actions. No matter what words are coming out of your mouth, right? It's very clear by your actions that you don't want this. So let's just go ahead and end it. And no matter how many times this person, no, 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 I love you. Or no, 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 let's not. Or no, 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 I, I do love you. Not, no, no. And I really feel like that's the lesson that you learned here in this situation, Right? And this person is learning the lesson that if you really love something, if you really want something, if, if it is what you really want, you're going to have to take a risk and let those, uh, those walls come down. You're going to have to take a risk and take responsibility for your actions and the way that you treated this person. This person was abundance to you. This person was a ten of pentacles to you. Why are you stringing them along? For some of them, that's why. Because they thought that they could get long-term, their long-term wish fulfillments out of you without investing a lot more in you. And I know that's hard to hear. But it's time that you acknowledge that, right? That this person, they just didn't want, they just weren't going to give you what you wanted. And that you were kind of wasting yourself and wasting all that good love and all, all that, everything that you were giving this person, you were wasting it on them because they didn't appreciate it. And they didn't appreciate it until you pulled it back and walked off. And then they were like, but wait, I really actually liked you. I really actually cared about you. I thought I'd get years of, of this treatment out of you. Like, no. Hey, baby. What are you doing? Get down, baby girl. Get down. Right? You see how she's coming up? Normally she's all forceful and stuff because that's just her breed. But you see how she was all, uh, all kind of sweet and, man, I, I kind of needed you. I kind of loved you. You're walking away from me now. Oh, man. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me go let them out, y'all. Sorry about that. But, yeah, this person wants to talk to you. I'm suddenly getting really itchy right here around my nose. And that's a big sign of this person wants to come forward and talk to you. Now they want to come forward and talk to you, right? Absence has made the heart grow fonder, right? This person is realizing, damn, I really had hit the jackpot here with this person. There isn't a ten of cups out here, though. I will tell you that, right? This person's feeling five of pentacles because they've lost a ten of pentacles, right? So... I'm not saying that this person was doing this with malicious intent in their heart, okay? Not for all of you. For some of you, it's very possible this person could have been doing it very consciously. But for most of you, this person was doing it very unconsciously, you know? They were doing it very, you know, they felt justified in the big walls that they had around them because they had been hurt in the, in the past. But they weren't paying attention to how, how they were emotionally hurting you, right? How they were taking away your wish fulfillment and this wasn't really giving you what you needed out of this, right? The only cups on the board is a king of cups and it's in reverse, right? With a nine of cups also in reverse, right? And they, look at here, and they see you now independent here with that nine of pentacles, right? They see that you're really the, the the kind of like you made out better in this situation than they did, right? Materially. Now that could be actually money financial wise, okay? But either way, this person has five pinnacles. They saw you barely even has five pinnacles, really. Um Um, if you are in the situation, okay, that uh, with the business partnership kind of dissolving situation here, okay, 
if you're in some kind of litigation with this person, okay, you're going, like I said, you in the end are going to end up in a situation where this person, where you end up in the nine of pentacles, you're going to financially make out in this situation here. Okay. Um, and the court system is going to rule that this person was, you know, that they didn't have any claims to claim you the way that they did, or, you know, that they were unjustified in doing that. They might even have to pay you money and compensate you money back for, you know, for the ideas or pay you back for some kind of um, intellectual property that they've been using on the business because you have records and things like that. That, well, you know what? I was the one that came up with the name of the business. You know what? I was the one that did the majority of the work. I did all the paperwork. I did this. I did that. I did this. I did that. This person was really just the face of it. But at the heart of it, I was the one doing all the work. Then when you separated away and tried to start your own thing, they want to come back and try to take that away from you or something. And then you're like, well, you know what? In fact, their business, I was the heart of their business kind of situation here for some of you, okay? Um, a court system is going to be like, uh, excuse me. Yeah, this person you know, barely been hold. like I said, barely had five pinnacles. They might be holding on to four pinnacles at this point, right? But in the end, you're holding on to those nine pinnacles. In a, any other kind of like more emotional situation here where it's a relationship, a friendship, um, you know, some, a partnership in that kind of way. Um, this person now is, like I said, they're going through karma. They're really asking for help here in this situation, okay? Um, they're really asking their angels, asking God, asking guidance for help to relieve, right? This, <sighs> right? This person has been in 10 of wands, 10 of swords energy. They got hella betrayed, hella backstabbed, okay? However hard that you had it, this person had it three times worse, 10 times worse, you know, times 10. Um, whatever burdens that you had at the end of this, you're coming out a nine of pentacles, you know, out of this, and this person is here asking, praying for God, praying for guidance, praying for help to, you know, to end these situations. How do they drop this burden? How do I in how do I, uh, they really don't want that this situation to end with you, right? But they want their burdens to end and they could be seeing you as the solution to their problem. So they're asking God, how do I end these problems? What are these problems? What is this, uh, betrayal or backstab this person went through? Ooh, they lost. Yeah. The end of this relationship, they could, if they chose a different relationship over you, that relationship has ended. And not too well either, I don't think. Ooh, judgment in reverse. Yes. This person is, they feel incredibly burdened by the fact that they saw you as their ten of pentacles, as their long term, as their, I'm going to set up a foundation on this. But their fear of letting you in, right, of opening up their heart chakra to you, of unblocking that heart chakra and facing these emotional wounds that they have has caused them to lose this relationship, right? For some of you, this could be a situation where you feel like a soulmate or possibly even a twin flame chose not to be in a relationship with you and they they denied their divine path, right? They misjudged. Um, for others of you, this is a, a person where they uh, they got into a relationship. Even if this was a business, okay, this could they could have had a very karmic person whispering in their ear that they possibly were in a relationship with, okay, that really gave them some really terrible advice, okay? They gave them some really terrible advice and they chose that person's advice over yours and it ended up really getting them backstabbed, getting them betrayed, um, and now they are praying, um, praying for help, okay, to get the relationship with you back, okay? Because it didn't feel like whatever this other relationship, partnership, relationship, whatever it was, this person needs a lot of healing. They're in a very, like, hopeless situation here, right? Yeah. Uh, for some of them, they could have uh, fallen into some kind of um, a substance or emotional abuse situation, Okay. Specifically, they could have gotten into a relationship with somebody who was like a, like a, a really severe alcoholic, possibly. Okay. That's just for some of you. 
they feel incredibly burdened by the fact that they turned their back on this opportunity here with you. That, yeah, but it was this very much so the sense of they saw you as their ten of pentacles, right? Lessons. This person is being spanked, learning a real deep lesson to not let third party interference, not let somebody else convince them, you know, of what they know in their heart. Also, this could be their ego, right? Their fears, their ego, their past traumas could have really stood in their way, right? And that's justice coming through here, right? This person had a choice, the lovers, right? Some of y'all, it was a choice between you and a karmic. For some of you, that karmic was not specifically, it was their own self, their own ego, their own fears and doubts that stood in their way that for some of them was fed into by another person somebody on the outside a brother a sister a family member um somebody else that wanted to be in a relationship with them just somebody else that also fed into those fears and those doubts of going down of opening up this road with you right for sure and it's a big ass lesson here about letting people you know come in yeah about stepping up and becoming an emperor for some of them right yeah, and getting out of that trapped mindset there, right? It's justice. Like I said, justice has came in in this situation, teaching this person a, a really big lesson about what it feels like to be on the other side of this, right? Um, if, if it's a more business scenario, they got into a business relationship with somebody who really, fucked, what did I say, right? Regrets. That's what we started that off with is regrets. And that's what the five of cups is regrets. They really regret walking away from this situation. They regret doing whatever they did to make you walk away from this situation. Okay. Okay. Be assertive. I'm getting like a king. Like I'm like I'm seeing kind of like a king of wands in my mind. Kind of energy. Yeah. Learn these lessons, being this wounded warrior, dropping this devil, these fears, these doubts, right? Oof. Be assertive. Letting go of their mask, yeah. Tell me more about this be assertive, please. Uh, we've been picking up the same story for a while here, though. I'm going to be honest with you, right? It's the same story of the person shouldn't have done this. They were being, um, they were emotionally pushing you away. They weren't ready. They rejected you. They rejected this path. They rejected, you know, um, this business opportunity or something that they were supposed to do here. Uh, you know, now they're receiving karma. They know, they know who you are now. They, they acknowledge that you were their, their 10 of pentacles here. What's the new information here, spirit? That kind of seems to be at the point where a lot of people are in this. Yeah, they're having to learn how to be assertive and separate themselves away from another, from an energy, from a toxic karmic, from a toxic mother, from uh, just stagnant situations where there is no growth, where there is no nurturing and possibility, you know, just to end this cycle. They're really having to heal a lot of wounds, of mother wounds inside of them. To, to take off these masks and really face down, right? Yeah. To go on a journey heal, to heal, to heal this, right? They're being really asked to face a lot of their issue, like their mothering issues, mother wounds, um, just past, uh, past things. A lot of it here is that um, there was, um, they have been really hurt by feminine energy here in their life. Again, the empress does not have to be a woman, okay? We say this every reading, but the empress does not have to be a woman, right? Um, the empress can be a man, can be, you know, whatever. 
they identify as being as, but it's this sense, right? This, this doesn't even have to be another person. This can be, like I said, this is their own mentality within themselves. Um, they had a very big, fe uh, very big rejection of the feminine energy within them. Okay. And they needed to heal that. They need to heal that, that right there. For some of them, like I said, it's getting away from a karmic mother or sister or brother or, you know, a karmic energy that is just within them that they have like issues with, uh, with women or with feminine energy in general. I'm hearing somebody say, I don't trust them. Yeah. Like they're having to, to deal with a lot of their trust issues. Like I said, in the very beginning, it's, no, it's nobody else's responsibility to fall, you know, to make up for where other people in your life fell short. Exactly. They had a very abusive, uh, could have been the mother of their children, an ex or something like that, that very much so imbalanced them. Right. Very much so. Like I said, it is a feminine energy in their life, whether it was a woman or not. Um, but it is giving me very big, like mother, mother of their children, uh, somebody that raised them. Okay. If they went away, I'm hearing cat. So if they went away to like Catholic school or something like that, they could have had a really, um, a bad experience with a particular teacher or a nun that was their teacher or something. I don't know. I'm kind of just hearing that a little bit or some kind of abusive situation here. It could have been, um, they could have been kind of taken advantage of by like a, uh, somebody that watched over them, like a babysitter or something like that, that gave them a lot of really deep wounds when it comes to trusting feminine energy. For this Queen of Cups and uh, the Death card there, it could specifically be a Scorpio. That, that happens a lot too here. We've been talking about that. Like a, some kind of low vibrational Scorpio uh, feminine energy from their past. Yeah, someone who's very abusive, very angry, very controlling. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody who misused and somebody that was never taught how to really, because uh, a magician is somebody that knows how to use their, their tools and their tricks of the trade, right? Somebody that themselves was never really taught. So this would be somebody who would, who would have given, who I probably would have had a very toxic childhood themselves. Okay. Um, or toxic relationships in their past, especially with other women, they would have really bad issues with trust themselves. Right. And this is somebody who grew up in either was in a relationship or had a, this child and gave this child very toxic issues with, with feminine energies being overly controlling, uh, overly controlling, overly bearing, um, overbearing, possibly physically, emotionally abusive. Okay. Um, or all of the above, right? They definitely could have dealt with this from a motherly or authoritative feminine figure in their life okay and dated pe that same people who kind of went along that same that same avenue over and over and over again right for some of them this is uh this is a father figure okay that gave them very negative views of women Okay, they gave them a very negative view of women also possibly, right? So this could just be, um, yeah, what did I just say? Yeah, Knight of Cups gave them a very Knight of Cups. You use them, you abuse them, you toss them to the side. They're nothing, they're nothing. You don't ever trust a woman. Don't ever trust a woman, son. You know, uh, you don't ever trust a woman kind of energy. Um, I can also see that as well. Either way, like I said, this was either they were abused by this person or they were taught to abuse women emotionally, physically, in some type of way, either by friends, by a father, by a mother, by abuse that they endured themselves, something like that, right? And this mask here would just be assertive. It's like this overly dominant, like, you know, like macho kind of like if this person is a man, kind of like this macho man or this very, very ma either way, feminine or for uh, either way, this person was taught very much so to radiate a very specific 
view of masculine energy, right? And a very specific view of this person might have seen women as underneath them, right? Or people that operate in feminine energy as underneath them, right? A very patriarchal, I, I'm, a, I'm a man or I'm in masculine energy, so... I am better, right? If this was another woman, it could have been, you know, that they looked down on people, you know, that they did not have this very like feminine, sweet kind of vibe to them. And people, you don't have to, you know, but um, they looked down on other women who did. They, they, they saw them as too soft or too, you know, too feminine or you're too this, you're too that. I'm so much better than all these. I'm not like all these other girls, kind of it kind of issue here okay um they might be the type of person that called other women pick me's and they really want to oh you're this and you always want to chase after a man and it's this and it's that and it's that while they continuously want that affection from somebody but continuously push it away from from you know from themselves and from other people right and they pushed away a very harmonious soulmate relationship here no matter what this was friendship or actual like romantic relationship partnership whatever it was something that could have been very prosperous as a ten of pentacles here right and something that was along their path right they really misjudged what this was and now this person feels incredibly burdened by it and they are praying to be unburdened by the fact that, you know, for some of them, I'm going to be honest with, for some of them, they could be praying to, to forget about you. Please let me forget about this person. Please let me just move on from this person. Please let me just walk away. I don't care anymore, right? Um, But their spirit guides and your spirit guides are really kicking their ass mentally about being like, you should have apologized. You shouldn't have acted like that. You shouldn't have acted like that. And whether or not they're supposed to, whether or not they're going to, or is it in their intention to come back towards you and apologize to you, they are really being hammered home that that behavior is not acceptable, right? If you have this wall up, you will lose. You will continuously lose people who really actually want to be there for you because this isn't really about you, right? This is about this person learning how to become a better person, how to be more open, how to be less judgmental and less, you know, uh, kind <laughs> of stabby stabby kind of like energy. I don't know why. I thought my spirit guy said stabby stabby, but yeah. Yeah, their anger. This person gets angry and you know what? Fuck you. And like walks away from situations and will hold on to grudges of no, it's that person's fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. It's their fault. And never take personal responsibility for the role that they played in pushing those people away from them. Or the role that they played in, you know. This is the type of person that would want a relationship to end or want a friendship to end. But instead of just ending it, they'll start a fight or they'll, you know, they'll just be like the biggest bitch or the biggest asshole they can be all week long until you finally break or however long it takes them, how many ever hours or how many days it takes them to break you. And then you blow up, you have a big, and then they're like, see, see, this is why I don't like you. This is why we can't be friends. This is why I don't want to be in a relationship with you. You see, you see, you see, it's a very self-sabotage behavior right when the behavior is this person is asking me to step up they're asking me to change or you know I feel the need to change in this relationship or I feel this relationship changing or I feel this person pulling away from me so I'm going to cause a fight I'm going to cause something I'm going to blow up this is all subconsciously mostly for this person and then when that person blows up or has something to say to me or says something that hurts my feelings I'm going to res respond with hurting their feelings saying something way over the line and then walking peace out mic dropping peace out you're a bitch you're an asshole bye your dick small anyway <laughs> you know kind of energy um that this person had I'm out of here and either pushing you to walk away from them or having that mark drop moment and walking away themselves right then staying continuously mad for a long time because subconsciously they really actually wanted this to mean something they really actually did want this to be something something heavier or they did want actually to go up to this next level but they're but they're refusing in the past i'll say they were refusing to see the role that they played in that part they were refusing to sit back and say damn i should have just i should have i could have just said I'm not ready for this. Let's slow down. I could have just said, you know what? You're not the person you, you, you know what? Let, yes. Let's end this relationship. You're it's not, you're not what I'm looking for. This is not turning out like I wanted it to let's yeah. Let's just go ahead and end this instead of stringing you along. Right. 
this person held on to a ton of anger and now this person is having like really big realizations about why this person really walked away or why they pushed you away because they're seeing that they're not they're in a very you know uh, they're not being seen in a very good light for whatever actions that they took in this situation, okay? Um, they could have been, you know, they could have been really petty about it and talked a bunch of shit about you behind your back or something like that, you know, in this situation. They didn't, they all around are noticing they did not handle this situation in the best way. They're having a lot of anger, though. This person is still very angry. But I want to, who are they angry at? At you? At, at the collective? Why? For walking away. Mm. Yeah, this person is still having some control issues. For getting your justice. This person might think that, oh, yeah. Oh, for walking away and go to, going towards, if this was a relationship, you could be like, right? This is a, a person that's showing up as a king of cups in reverse. This per You're walking away and going towards your justice, which is the emperor. Going towards somebody who is willing and ready, who is more experienced, who is, you know, ready to be that person that they weren't ready to be okay so they could be experiencing some jealousy because they see you being in another relationship or see you moving on to be with somebody else um why is this person angry spirit tell me why this person's angry This person is also angry because you seem to be doing much better without them than they're doing without you. They also feel like you're lying. They feel like you're lying about being in this nine of pentacles. They're like, you're lying. You don't really feel that happy. You don't really feel that, that blissful. You don't really feel that independent without me. That's not how you really feel. That's not really it. They also feel like this is kind of undeserved. In some kind of way, they feel like you don't deserve to be in this Nine of Pentacles. What the heck? I feel like you made it. You made a, a good choice walking away from this person right here, okay? Because it really feels like this person is just praying for 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 their karma to end, right? They're praying for. They're praying to have you back without making any changes. They want you back, but they think it's bullshit that you're that you're feeling that you know that you're uh, tower. I really feel like this person's been going through some tower moments. It's been a huge tower moment to them. It was huge to them that you walked away from this and you profited without them. Tell me more about this tower moment here, spirit. I was about to end this, and then it got, and then I'm like, what's the new information? What's the new information? The person is still actually very angry. Are they? They are. Yeah, no, they are. Angry that they're not dealing with it as much. They are like, I shouldn't have done what I did. But I really feel like this person is like, I shouldn't have done what I did. Because they're like, I pushed it too far. Like, damn. I thought I could get away with it. And they would still come back. Damn. Oh, this person is sneaky. So they are, they are like... Damn, I pushed it too far. I'm like, damn. Uh, right? Like I said, with that Ten of Pentacles, they saw the Ten of Pentacles with you. They thought it would be long. They thought they'd be able to string this along with you a lot further. The fuck? Tower moment here. Indecisiveness. Two of Swords. blocked that's their tower moment. they're blocked they feel like they can't come back towards you now they're like damn it's like this, per this person was still playing emotional games they're fuck, fuck you peace out whatever goodbye la they'll come back they'll come back and if they don't come back they'll take me back they'll take me back it's fine they'll come back it's fine where are they where, where are they let me looking for you and there you are moving on glowing up being beautiful being happy healing 
moving on, being in a, uh, going on to be in another relationship. And they're just like, with an upgrade at that. <laughs> okay. And this person's like, and here I am going through all this shit. Here I am missing you. And you're just moving on, glowing up, looking beautiful. Having everything you've ever wanted. There's no way you're that happy. If I'm miserable, you must be miserable too. And they're, but you might have literally blocked this person. Like spiritually blocked or you like literally blocked this person. Like they tried, they're like, okay, okay. It's been so long. Uh, I'll come back to them. And they got that. Sorry, this user has, <laughs> has blocked to me. The Clutching their pearls, baby. They was like, oh, shot motherfucking Pikachu. That's right. Motherfucker, I don't choose you. Get out. Uh, wow. They were shocked. They were so shocked. They were still trying to be emotionally abusive. They were still trying to be emotionally sneaky. They think, with this misjudge, with this judgment reverse here, they think it's not fair. Like, it's not fair that I can't act any way I want to, abuse this person, treat him however I want to, and then they still don't want to be in a relationship with me. Exactly. Look at this shit. King of Swords in reverse. That's who this person is. They stay in. They're, for right now, I don't know. Hopefully, this person will learn. But for right now, this person is still emotionally unavailable, truly. And this person is very angry and very mad. And they're very much so... They're emotionally unstable right now, this person is. They're a little bit dangerous. I'm not going to joke to you. They're emotionally unstable right now. They're going through a lot of upheaval, a lot of towers, a lot of like, like it's really blowing their mind that you're just moving on without them and moving on and just being okay without them. It's really just like, they're spiraling. Yeah. They feel, they're like, oh my God, like I had, I had the key. I had, I had it in my hand and it got snatched away. And it didn't just come back. It didn't just like, what? Like, I can't, like, I can't take that. Like, what do you mean? And they feel like they have no, they feel like there's a lot of drama, a lot of chaos, a lot of fight, and they don't have any tools or they don't have anything to stop it. They feel defenseless to all this drama and shit that's popping off and happening in their life. They're just like, you know, they have friends, they have family members turning their back on them or they're losing their job or there's all this chaos happening in, in their life. And they are just shocked, completely shocked that and, and that they feel like they have no control. They're feeling out more and more and more out of control when that was their problem to begin with is that they were trying to too overly control this and be kind of, and, it, and that control turned, them, turned into emotional abuse on your side. Now this person is watching, right? Watching through social media or watching you from afar or some shit like that. Watching you through friends and family, through shared, well, how, well, you know, just a quick, well, how is that person doing? Or, or what are they doing? What are they doing nowadays? Kind of energy. Yeah, this person is in chaos and conflict in their life. Whether or not this is just internally, emotionally, mentally, or I feel like it's in both. Because if you're, if, it, if you're, right? We talk about that all the time. The exterior reflects the interior. So if, yeah, this person is probably like isolating away from a lot of people. A lot of people are probably isolating away from them as well. Just a lot of conflict, chaos in their life. And they're, they're watching, watching while they're being blind. It was a huge, 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 huge. I just kept, my spirit guides keep showing me that shot Pikachu like, like literally they could not believe that they that it was really taken away from them that they were like oh my god like what do you mean i can't have it i really can't have it yeah you really can't have it i'm really just gonna have to sit back and watch this person move on and be happy with somebody else i really have ruined my chances here i really rejected what rejected this opportunity here like, yeah, like I'm really going to have to sit here in my, and that's, that's really why they're mad. They're mad because they're dealing with, they're having to take accountability whether they want to or not. 
And they don't want to. Yeah, exactly. Hermit mode. Exactly. They're having to sit there and take accountability and be, you know, and really have to sit down and look at themselves. And it's making them very angry, very mad, very like they're lashing out to people around them. They're being really rude and mean to people around them. Okay. They're, they're having fights with people around them. They're, you know, yeah. And so that's isolating them even further away from people around them, putting them in a position where all they have is themselves and their own thoughts to think about and talk about. They're being forced, um, to just, to just look at the own heartache that they cause themselves. Damn. I just heard somebody say baby mama drama. Oh, four of wands in reverse. They could have got kicked out of their house or kicked out of their home. They, um, if they were in a, another relationship with somebody else, that relationship could be ending. This person could end up kicking them out of the house. They could have had a share house or shared an apartment or, you know, something like that. They were staying with friends and family because they're being, you know, they're being so combative and they're being so mean, right? Because their exterior what is really reflecting all of the, the pain and the anger that they have inside of themselves. And that's, they're projecting that onto everybody else around them, spewing all this hatefulness, being so rude, so mean. Somebody like somebody could have asked them for help or said something to them and they were like, I don't give a fuck. I can't give a fuck less. And this person's like, excuse me you gotta tell me you could give a fuck less while you stayed in my house and this person was like uh and they're like oh no you can pack your shit and get the fuck out how about i don't give a fuck about that Ooh, if they're in another relationship they could be uh cheating on that person emotionally or physically actually cheating on that person this person could find out about it damn that's person that's doing some lowdown shit, no doubt, like, damn. What else, what else? Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and end this, spirit. Tempers in reverse, yeah, this person is in a lot of conflict, a lot of chaos, traps. For some of them, seriously, this person could have ended up going to jail or going to prison, okay? Um, this person could have ended up, uh, saying like legally having to pay for it for a lot of things they could have caught up, been caught up in some kind of legal battle here um i said this person might have had trouble with um with you know substance abuse or something this person could have got caught right this person could have got caught and they could be spending some time in jail um and because of that they could have friends and family like turning their back on them being like I'm not going to support you while you're going in and out of jail or while you're being on substances or while you're spiraling out of control and you're doing all of this. Like I gotta, you know, I gotta, you know, preserve myself or preserve my, they could have gotten a relationship with somebody that they have, that, that uh, has kids. Okay. And they were like, look, like you're not going to be talking to me or my kids that way. You're not about to be acting like that around my parents or acting that way. Like whoever it is, there's a lot of people around this person that's abandoning this person because they're like, they're just projecting a lot of really negative energy onto everybody around them. Right. The energy and that energy is gaining momentum. This person is going to keep being very unhappy is going to keep being very projecting their energy onto everyone else. As long as they are denying the truth that they know inside of themselves. Right. They're very unhappy. Um, they were li living with that mask on, right? Living with that mask on and it, and it's showing the mask is crumbling and people are like, yo, like, are you losing it, bro? Like, what the hell is wrong with you? It's time to release negativity. Exactly. Like their spirit, their spirit guys are trying to cleanse this person of all the anger and the fear and the doubt, but the, the, the hurt and the pain that, that they're feeling from the end of this relationship or the end of this partnership or whatever it is, all the karma that they're paying is really manifesting as, um, anger. Like, well, I'd say that, you know, it's like the fear, the fear, the doubt, the pain is manifesting as anger. They're really angry at themselves. And so, and so in that sense, they're angry at a lot of other people around them. They're being really rude and angry to a lot of people around them. Damn. So I definitely think that you should just give this person their space. You should not answer the phone or anything else. When, yeah, because it's a time for healing. For you, it's a time for healing. It's a time for you to realize that you are good enough. 
that, you know, you're good enough without this person, with or without this person, you were too good to be treated that way. And I don't mean it as far as like, oh, you were so much better than this person. But I'm like, you realize, right? I don't have to sit here and bang, 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 and beg and beg and beg and beg. And I don't have to sit here and play these emotional games with you. I don't have to do that. I can move on and be very happy by myself or with somebody else, period, right? And so you're in this healing time and spirit is trying to push this person into a healing time too. But right now they're in the anger stage. I really feel, you know how they have, like they say they have, like you have the different stages of grief, right? And I feel like this person is in the anger stage of grieving the loss of this relationship. I feel like they've been in the anger stage for a while. First, they were angry at you. Then they were angry at other people around, well, uh, angry at themselves. When they went to the realization that this is really over, then they started being really projecting that anger onto other people around them, which is isolating them away from other people, which is just in turn building up that anger inside of them. This person is really going to have to learn how to have like some really healthy ways to address this and, and you know, to take that mask off, right? To take that mask of everything's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. While they're just so angry I mean, and, and like if they're in another relationship. This person's gonna be like, why the fuck are you so angry? Like, why are you so angry? Why are you so angry? They can't admit, well, I'm so fucking angry because my ex is moving on and being in another relationship. Like, but you're in another relationship. Like, what are you so fucking angry about it for? You know? Yeah. For you, honestly, a win-win outcome is forecast here. Yeah, surrender. Surrender to the divine. Let this person deal with whatever it is that they're dealing with. Let the divine handle them, okay? For you, um... Things are balancing out, right? With that balancing, the scales keep coming out, that compromise. Like things are balancing out eventually. I don't know how long it'll take this person. This person is still very angry. They're angry at you, angry at themselves, angry at everybody around them, angry at God, everything. Everything, everything, everything. Yeah, and that energy is gaining momentum. But for you, the energy of healing, peacefulness, moving on, this, this you know, trading of energy here is happening. So if at one point you were very angry about the situation and you are finally forgiving and moving on, that person now is feeling the anger because they are feel energetically, they are very much so feeling this is over. This is over. You are putting up that block. This is over. I'm moving on. You're moving on through the stages of grief, of grieving this relationship and moving on and giving forgiveness and letting go. And this person is very much so still very, in, very stuck in the anger stage. Wow, expect a powerful change, right? So very much so. Pray, pray for this person to, you know, to find the peace and harmony that they need. Pray that they, you know, that the relationship that they're in now works out, or that you know the best possible situation for whatever they're doing works out in this situation, right? You know, um, that's it. Don't spend all day praying for this person and just worrying about this person, right? A fiery climax approaches. Yeah, is there is a big shift in energy for you coming in here collective because you are really learning in all of this with this person you have learned I don't have to sit there and bang you know um if you're this person you know that or you're the person that had your walls up you know you're learning I can let my walls down I can trust I can heal I can move on from this right if you're the person that was sitting there banging and banging and banging on other people's walls you're learning I don't I'm I don't have to I'm not obligated to sit there and bang and bang and bang and prove and prove and prove myself and to get acceptance from somebody else. Either you accept me and you love me and I'm here showing up for you and accept that or you don't. And I will go, and if you don't, I will go give this this energy to somebody who does appreciate it, right? Yeah, the answers you need are coming here. For this full moon in Gemini, definitely. And I, I definitely feel like that's what it is. That fiery climax approach is still ended up on the back. I'm hearing cut. Take time to breathe out. Yeah, I really, um, yeah. I just really feel like, you know, you're moving on, you're, con you know, you're learning, you're about, things are balancing out for you. It's a big energy gaining as you're forgiving and letting go and moving on. Uh, it's a big switch of like all that anger and all that, you know, everything that you were holding in about this person as you're releasing it. I really feel like it's like streaming back to this person. Um, that could have been sending you a lot of like anger and, and negativity and a lot of pettiness and a lot of, see, I've moved on and I'm in a new relationship with somebody else and blah, blah, blah. And all this while well, the whole time they were looking over your shoulder, making sure that you were miserable. But now that you're moving on and you're forgiving and you're not miserable, now this person's really angry. They got a lot of growing up to do and a lot of facing their own issues to do 
I would just move on from this person. That would be my personal advice. Of course, you are an adult. You can take whatever advice that you want. Of course, I am not a psychologist or psychiatrist or any of that stuff, right? So, but that's just the energy that I'm reading here. I would just say, you know, yeah, let go and release from this person's energy for sure because they're very angry and it's not on you to hold that anger in your heart for them or any of that stuff. Let it go, right? Let it go. I'm hearing two more. Okay, spirit, let's come on. Really, it's got to be as long as it's going to be. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I really felt a lot of that energy when I first started this. I was feeling those waves, that waves of like, before I started the reading, I was feeling like these waves of kind of like anger. And then when I sat down to start the reading, I kept like blushing or I kept like feeling like that, like I was like, oh, I'm like I'm losing my temper. And I kept having to like, oh, why do I feel this way? Yeah, it's this person. They are hot, 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 hot mad. And they're just, they're, it's not only you. It's not just you don't take it personally. It's not just you, you know? It's at everyone, at everything. It's because this person is not living in their truth. That's why they're so angry. But they are being faced by the truth. They are being faced with the truth that, you know, you're gone. You're, you're moving on. And they're very angry about that. Because for some of you, they wanted to string you along for longer than they were stringing you along for. Like their game is over for some of them. And for some of them, they're realizing, wow, I really actually had true feelings for this person. And those feelings are ending. You know, it's over with. Balance spirituality and practicality. Yeah. So find that balance with inside of yourself. Listen to your emotions. Listen to your feelings. Listen to your intuitive hints, right? Um, be finding, you know, that meditation, that contemplation, that moving on, that releasing, that forgiving energy. Keep bringing that and letting that flow around you okay yeah and hold you know hold that vision hold that vision of peacefulness of understanding in your mind yeah because your emotions are running really the emotions of right like i was just talking about the emotions of this person are running really high so Try as much as you can to energetically cut your cords with this person, okay? Because they are sending you a lot of energy and it's a lot of, like, fuck you energy, okay? And not not gonna lie, right? It's, it's a lot of anger energy. So if you're just feeling yourself suddenly out of nowhere getting mad or if you're suddenly reminiscing on all the negative things of, of, of your of this of you and this person's past relationship that's why because this person is really concentrating really hard on this anger I feel abandoned kind of energy that they are feeling so that's why uh, so definitely try your hardest to kind of let go of a lot of this okay Thank y'all so much for being here. That's really what I have. I hope that this brought the love, light, and clarity that you're really looking for in your situation, okay? I know that this has been kind of, um, the update of this situation really came later on. You know, it was a pretty familiar story, minus the, the legal issues. That was that was kind of a new, a new twist to it that it could have been taking or a different way it could have been manifesting in your life, okay? But, um definitely um let let this go i really feel like you know that i feel like those have been drawn to this video that they know that they're they're there they're blocking they're moving on you know um so just be aware right that this person is very much so still in anger um it could be a warning for some of you that this person could be trying to take shots they could be trying to do something sneaky i'm not getting this yet uh, so much in their energy hopefully keep praying that the best possible outcome is coming and this person is letting go and moving on okay keep praying for that so i'm not trying to manifest that happening but this person is a little bit of a loose cannon right now okay so if you get any kind of messages or voicemails or calls from this person um I would just not even answer the phone, okay? Because it's not going to be nice. Whatever they got to say, um, or if it is nice, it's not going to be very genuine, okay? So I would just say detach yourself from this energy as much as possible. And if you haven't already blocked this person's number, I might suggest that you might want to do that, okay? Of course, at the end of the day, it's on you. But, um, you know, if this person gets angry enough, 
you don't need that shift in your vibe, right? You don't need to be going on and be having a great time and then have some ex call you up and, and go down the list of everything that's wrong with you or how the next guy won't like you because of all these things. You know, I don't want that to happen for you. And I'm not trying to get you to manifest that into your life, right? So just go ahead and put out the energy out there that you're like, nah, I'm moving on. I don't want this person. If that's indeed how you're feeling about it. If you're not, maybe this gave you enough information to make the choices that you feel like you need to make. Okay. And I'm not swaying you either one way or the other. You know, um, I'm just telling you this person's hot. They are hot. They are angry. They are mad. They are lashing out at a lot of people in their life right now. Okay. And that's, just what's going on with this person so you made the choices that you need to okay i hope that this gave you everything that you were looking for this gave the answers that you were uh that you were needing okay if you are um not subscribed to the channel think about subscribing if you are already subscribed to the channel thank you very much so lovelies i really appreciate you okay let me know now in the comment section down below if this resonated for you all right and i will see you lovelies in the next one bye <laughs>